What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you want to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Gladly. Let me teach you how reality works. Our arguments would never mesh. Only through a fight would we ever reach a conclusion. I did feel sad about that, but I could accept it. That's the way it is. The human race will never see a day when everyone truly understands one another. But that just proves how diverse we all are. Thanks to the process of evolution, we're a living contradiction. Only the victor can proclaim how just that is. And Maribel and I, two sets of justice, opposed in principles, were about to clash against each other. Smash him down. At Maribel's signal, Gaia moved first. Perhaps it was his hatred that made him lunge at me, eyes bloodshot. He had been taken away by the magical inquisitors, but maybe he escaped or something. The likes of you challenging Sir Rimuru. Sheehan shouted as she attempted to get in Gaia's way. But Yuki stopped her. I'll take you. Oh, how interesting. No one weak enough to let that girl rule over them can defeat me. Her eyes shone red. That's a sign Sheehan was dead serious. With a tremendous aura, she readied her giant sword. The battle was underway. Leaving her to work things out, I looked at the other man in the group. He seemed stronger than a paladin, but Gopta was engaging him now. Ranga was with him, but honestly, I had my concerns. Gopta! Sheehan shouted. Time to show us what the big four can do. Oh, I totally forgot. I did kinda put that in place, didn't I? You got it. Okay. Now let me show you something really good. Transform. Transform. With that call out, Gopta and Ranga merged together, turning into a cool, werewolf style figure that didn't have a hint of Gopta to it. Right, that could probably work. And unlike the last time I saw it a month ago, Gopta has apparently learned how to control himself better. Now he was conducting himself perfectly, no longer battered around by Ranga's strength. He was facing a foe who could most likely beat the Ten Great Saints, but I figured Gopta could probably manage. Trusting in that, I focused on my own enemy. Oops, but before that, gathering my aura into my left hand, I casually hurled it at Gaia. That was all it took to render him into dust and erase him from this world. Stained by Maribel's desire, he had obtained powers beyond his own, it looked like, but to me, he was just a distraction. You wanted to fight me, huh? Well, glad you got the chance before you died. It was sort of a blunt way to address the dead, but hopefully he'd be satisfied with it. No, what was that? What was that? That power? What was it? That's me taking this seriously. And now it's your turn. You don't need to understand who you made your enemy. I'm going to gobble you down until you can never get resurrected again, so have fun nourishing me. I offered that little speech out of politeness before our battle. Now that I was serious, I didn't want anyone to expect kindness from me. To me, Maribel was now my enemy. I was going to kill her. It couldn't have been more obvious. Let's end this fast and go help out Milam, I said to myself as I took a step toward Maribel. Maribel now realized it, just who she was up against. This was a member of the Octogram, and one of the strongest people in the world. Hey, is it me, or is Sir Rimuru looking kinda scary now? Shut up, that's no way for part of the Big Four to talk. Listen, Gopta, that is the true form of the Demon Lord Rimuru. Ah, look how gallant and imposing he is. I, Sheehan, am truly happy to bear witness to this. Oh, uh, really? I think his true form is, you know how he usually goes around, and stuff. Yes, and that is quite fetching too, I will admit. But I'm sure Diablo so regrets not being able to see this right now. I will be sure to tell him all about it, for an extended period of time. Maribel could hear that conversation, but to her, it just sounded like mockery. Her mind was on other things. She needed to focus on Rimuru. This is no joke. Not a joke at all. The demon lord Rimuru must have found his experience at the council to be incredibly humiliating, but he didn't seem that angry about it. That's why people called him gentle, but that's so inaccurate. Yes, to Maribel, a riled demon lord was not a foe to trifle with. She had powered up Gaia as best she could. He had taken on more power than your average magic born, well beyond any human standard. Some of the older guard demon lords, like Frey or Carillon, might have had a difficult time against him. After all, Gaia had sacrificed the rest of his natural lifespan, burning up all the energy in his soul to borrow this outrageous force. And yet Rimuru had defeated him with a single passing blow, as if burning a pile of trash. That was how outclassed Gaia had been. Not just a child against a grown man, not just an elephant against an ant. Maribel's soul held a stronger force than Gaia's did. She had been resurrected, traveling to and surviving in another world, and presently, her mind was in a realm beyond human comprehension. But even so, she sensed that the demon lord Rimuru was now a threat. 
Thus, she immediately broke out her final option, Holy Field, the most lethal of barriers and a killer move against any monster. Ever well prepared, she had already stationed her blood shadow troops around the outer rim of the castle grounds for this. You can threaten me all you want, but now it's time. Time to see just how much more intelligent we are than monsters. As she bragged to Rimuru, she used her magical communication skills to send an order. Whoa, I feel all heavy. I remember this. And it's even stronger than it was then. This must be its true force. The big four werewolf stopped, confused, as his compatriot the ogre grinned defiantly. How annoying, Maribel thought, gritting her teeth. As the name Big Four suggested, they both possessed unusual strength. Gobta, the werewolf, was the kind of champion to earn second place in battle tournaments, and the ogre he was with was just as formidable. They were joined by other magic-born, people Rimuru brought with him to the council. Their sheer power is ridiculous. If I tried a frontal attack, I'd have no chance, even if Veldora never showed up. But, but now things were different. The demon lord overestimated his skills, and now he exposed his defenseless underbelly. Maribel chuckled to herself. That mistake will be their doom. But her conviction was wishful thinking. Ah, oh, I thought so. I anticipated you making this move. Did you think I wouldn't prepare for it? The demon lord Rimuru grinned at her, and the next moment, the holy field disappeared as quickly as it deployed. What? What did you do? Well, I'm walking around here all but asking to be attacked, so of course I had my people keep watch around the castle for me, right? Maybe you thought you had me in a trap, but I was just using myself as bait to trap you. I figured, after all, that if you wanted to enslave me with greed, you needed to be on sight. That was his response to Maribel, and at that point, Maribel understood everything. The missing Glenda hadn't been rubbed out at all. She'd betrayed her. Yes, yes. The only one overestimating their skills is me. And with her last resort exhausted, she was at a major disadvantage. Gaia was dead. Yuki had the advantage but still wasn't overpowering the ogre. The other one, Rama, the battle sage burning to avenge Glenda, was struggling against Gopta the werewolf. Both of them had been powered up by Maribel's greed. But the reality of it, the fact that neither could emerge victorious, showed just how strong the enemy was. Maribel would have to step up herself to change matters. The petite, doll-like girl was about to expose her true nature. Combusting her own soul, Maribel went beyond her limits. All she hoped for was victory. She couldn't make up for falling in that trap, but this was exactly what she wanted the whole time. A chance like this wouldn't come again. She knew that. And thus, she had no regrets. Time to get serious. I'm going to wager it all to kill you. Right, and I'll reply with my full force. Following that signal, Maribel started running. With a bound, she unleashed a kick on Rimuru, her physical skill far from childlike. The attack was fiercer and heavier than a tank round, forceful enough to bend an iron beam, but it gave Rimuru no distress. He lightly parried it, then used his momentum to throw her body down. Maribel reached out to the ground, leveraging her rebound to spin out of harm's way. Dodging Rimuru's follow-up attack, she launched Avarice as a sort of return gift. Die! You will thirst for death! Waves of darkness attacked Rimuru. This was Maribel's finishing move, a strike that took the living's instinctual lust for life and flipped it on its head. That was Maribel Razo, a girl who used her own will to perfect her unique skills. This one, too, was a sinful one, harnessing the most primordial emotions in the human body. No one could resist the enhanced siren song of greed it played, and there was no longer any doubting Maribel's victory. Yes, this couldn't happen any other way. I am reluctant to kill him, but it's not the worst outcome. It'd be far more foolish of me to leave such a dangerous man unchecked. If she had her way, she'd rule over Rimuru instead. But he wasn't the kind of foe who'd ever accept that. So Maribel opted to grasp complete victory for herself instead. Surrounded by the Black Surge, the Demon Lord Rimuru stood there, seemingly not attempting to resist. It just wasn't enough. No one, no matter how strong, can do away with their thirst for life. And that's what makes me invincible. It was true. She was all-powerful. Against Frey, Carillon, or an awakened Clayman, she probably would have won. Even Hanata the Saint would have faltered in the face of her skills. That's how strong the unique skill Avarice was. But, sorry. But my analysis just finished up. Now it won't work on me. Rimuru had triggered his ultimate skill, and at that moment, Maribel's chances of victory were zero. For while she was all-powerful, she was all-powerful within the dimension of that ultimate skill. Raphael was right after all. Maribel had a holy field prepared. Granville was the boss of the Western nations, so I was right to assume she had adopted it. 
She was such a master at it that it scared me, but it also played right into my hand. Now, the ever-eager Gabble, as well as Hakuro, Soka, and all her fellow troops, had something to do, it had been a pain keeping them calm over the past few days of no action, I certainly was glad I didn't disappoint them, but, man, look at this girl Maribel, she was strong, definitely strong, I felt that for myself when we were tussling earlier, and when she exposed me to those dark waves, that really made my spine tingle, I wasn't worried at all about the possibility of dying, but if she fired that at one of my other officials, well, the thought scared me, anyone besides me would have died for sure, if I had to guess, maybe Diablo would be the only one to survive, well, maybe Sheehan, too, but anyone else from Benamaru on down wouldn't have a chance. Maybe it was time to train their spirits, their souls, a little more, I thought. Completing my analyze and assess like Raphael requested, I gave Maribel her final warning. Sorry, but my analysis just finished up, now it won't work on me. I wasn't going to let her control other people, but if she was willing to retire to a quiet life and not bother anyone. Yes, even I knew I was going easy on her, but she looked like a ten-year-old girl. If I had to kill her, the guilt could have been gargantuan. So, you know, it'd be nice if she could surrender for me. Of course, I guess I can coldly reason like this because I'm no longer human myself, but... Don't give me that. More. Give me more. Even if I consume everything I have, I'm going to seize victory. Unfortunately, my words failed to reach her. Our principles were never gonna mesh anyway, I was preparing for an ending like this, but now that it was really happening, I couldn't help but feel a twinge of sadness. Maribel flew into a crazed flurry of physical strikes. Regrettably, none of them affected me. Well, if we can't understand each other, so be it. Alright, I'm going to make this painless for you. Feel free to stew on your loss inside of me. With that, I set off Belzebuth's soul consume, or tried to. But just then, with a loud boom, I saw Sheehan get sent flying from the corner of my eye. Turning toward her, I realized that Yuki had just drilled a kick into her, and despite her ultra-speed regeneration, she couldn't get back up to her feet. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to Luminoseka, Josie Yangada, Fennec Foxy, Adrian San Mateo, IK, Gina Esteoko, The Korean Um, JB, Anonymous DCOR, and last but not least, shout out to Saiki Kusuo. I'll see you guys in the next video.